All right, I'm going to go over the test questions here. There are two different versions, but all the multiple choice questions are the same. So if you're not, if you don't have the same version I do, just find where your answer choice is located. The only thing different are the answer choices are jumbled up. All right, so number one, we want to add all these together. So we first need to simplify them. So I'm going to break down each one of these. So that's four times two, two times two. That's a pair, and it's going to come outside and multiply by the eight. So that's 16, and then we have a leftover square root of 2. All right, the 24, that's 6 times 4, 3 times 2, and 2 times 2. So I get a pair of 2s, going to come outside, multiply by that 2. So that's 4, and then we have a leftover 3 and 2. So those multiply square root of 6. 18 breaks down to 9 times 2, and 9 is 3 times 3. So there's a pair of 3s comes outside, multiplies by negative 2, so that's negative 6, square root of 2. The 2 square root of 2's can combine, and we don't add what's inside the radical, you only add the, the numbers outside. So that's 16 minus 6, which is 10, square root of 2. And then since the square root of 6 is not a like term, we just tack that on the end. So for this version, answer choice is C. All right, uh, multiplying has a lot less rules than adding and subtracting does. So we just need to uh, multiply inside by inside, outside by outside. So I'll leave you with two cube root of 125, then x to the fourth times x to the seventh is x to the 11th. We need to simplify what's inside the radical. So break down your 125, 25 and five, five and five. And then we've got 11 x's. So I'm going to write it out 11 times. And since this is a cube root, we're going to be circling groups of three. So I have three fives, three x's, another three x's, and another three x's with two left over. So everything's going to come outside that's circled. So that's two times five, which is 10. x times x times x is x cubed. And then the answer in a cube root of x times x, x squared. So that's answer choice G on this problem. Number three wants us to rationalize. That means get the radical out of the denominator. Okay, that does not mean convert it into its rational exponent form, which is what letter A did. So that's why it's not A. Even though these are equivalent to each other, that's not what the problem was asking you to do. To rationalize it, you need to get a set of three twos, cube root set of three. We have one two so far, so I need two more. So I'm going to multiply by the cube root of two times two, okay? also known as the cube root of four. So that will give me the cube root of four on top. And on bottom, I get the cube root of eight, two times two times two. All right, but we know that this is going to simplify down to a set of three twos. We did this on purpose. We wanted exactly three twos, so the radical would be eliminated. So cube root of four over two. Number four, you need to do the same thing. We have to eliminate the radical. So this one, since it's a binomial that has two terms, we need to multiply by its conjugate. That's 2 minus the square root of 2. Got to multiply the top by the same thing. All right, so these are going to require some window panes to actually multiply them out. So we've got 3 minus square root of 2 being multiplied by 2 minus square root of 2. 3 times 2 is 6. That's negative 2 square root of 2. That's negative 3 square root of 2. And this is positive 2. Negative times a negative square root of 2 times square root of 2. So combine your like terms, 6 plus 2, that's 8. Negative 3 square root of 2 and negative 2 square root of 2 is negative 5 square root of 2. Adding, just like we did on problem number 1. That's your numerator. Okay, if you look down at your answer choices, probably not going to be A, probably not going to be D. Okay, do your window pane on the denominator. 2 square root of 2 and 2 negative square root of 2. That's 4. Okay, and when we multiply conjugates, we know that these middle ones 
are always going to cancel out 2 square root of 2 and negative 2 square root of 2. That's why we use conjugates. Then this is going to be a negative square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. All right, number five gives you the equation, the parent function, and then tells you that it wants it to be transformed. A compression by a factor of a third and two units to the left. Okay, anytime you compress or stretch, that's multiplying. So you're going to multiply in front by a third, square root of, and left or right is inside, that's horizontal, inside the radical, but it's opposite of what you think. So 2 to the left on the graph would go to negative 2, so we actually want to write plus 2 in here. This is one you can actually use your calculator to help you out quite a bit here. So if we open up a graph page on our calculator, okay, we can type in the original um, problem, which is square root of x, parent function. All right, that looks like that. And then type in your answer. So 1 divided by 3, square root of x plus 2. And we should see it compress. So it should be a little bit flatter. And it should move left 2, just like was described in the problem. A little bit flatter, left 2. So we know that's it. So even if you didn't know, you could have plugged in each of the answer choices and figured out which one it should have been from that. All right, number 6. Okay, we gave you this graph over here for your benefit, so you should use it. Draw an xy axis on there. Okay, um, they tell you that this function needs to be graphed. Um, square root of x plus 4 plus 6. So again, you can use the calculator to kind of help you out here. I will delete all those off. Alright, so the square root of x plus 4 plus 6. All right, you kind of see that it moves over to the left four and up six. If we drag this down, we can see it a little bit better. It's really just the parent function, slid left four and up six. All right, so if we graph that on here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this is a point, and then two, three, four, that's a point. You can get some of those points off the table on the calculator as well. Okay, but that's not all. They asked us to then translate it three units to the right and two units down. So we're going to make a new graph. Three to the right, one, two, three, two down. Here, so one, two, three, one, two. And one, two, three, one, two. So this is where our new graph ends up. Which of the following describes the domain and range of the resulting function? So I no longer really care about this red one. What's the domain and range of this? All right, domain is x's, so where does it start for the x's? It looks like negative 1, then it goes to the right. Right is greater than or equal to negative 1. Okay, what range is y values, so what's the y value we start at? 1, 2, 3, 4, and it goes up. Up is greater than or equal to 4. So find the one that has those two. Um, A has less than or equal to 1, so we don't want that one. All real numbers, nope. All real numbers, nope. Greater than negative 1, greater than 4. Looking like answer choice D on that one. Number 7, you need to distribute all of these. Okay, notice that this Y on the bottom doesn't have an exponent, which means it's a 1. Okay, and when we do this, it's going to be power to a power rule for all four of these. So when you do power to a power, you multiply. So x to the 1 half times 4, which is 2. y to the negative 2 times 4, negative 8. y to the 1 times 4, 4. And x to the 7 fourths, negative 7 fourths times 4. The 4s are going to cancel each other out, leaving you with x to the negative 7. Now you have two negative exponents. You're not allowed to leave them like that, so you need to move them. Basically, they're just going to switch sides. So that's x squared, x to the seventh, over y to the fourth, y to the eighth. And then since they are multiplying like bases now, you can just add their exponents together. x to the ninth, over y to the twelfth. All 
All right, this is when we just need to solve it out. So isolate the radical, already done. Cancel out the radical. We need to square both sides. 3x plus 3, less than or equal to 36. Subtract 3. 3x less than or equal to 33. Divide by 3. And x is less than or equal to 11. But remember, that's not the only part of inequalities. You also need to make sure that the inside portion is greater than or equal to zero. You can't have any negatives in there, so that's why we have to do this part. So subtract three, three x greater than or equal to negative three, divide by three. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative one. So it has to be greater than or equal to negative one and less than 11. So which one of these answer choices has that? Okay, not the one with the or, Okay, it's not either or, it's got to be both. Not to mention that the uh, symbol's the wrong way. For It's supposed to be x is greater than. So letter C is the one we want. Negative 1 less than x, which is less than 11. All right, letter D gives you this formula. Um, all, a lot of stuff about here, and then they tell you that the, they want to know what is the weight. So that's a w. What is w when D equals 7? So plug in 7 and rewrite your equation. And then we just need to solve or get W by itself. All right, so isolate the radical. It's already by itself. Cancel out the radical. We need to cube both sides. 7 cubed is 343. All right, multiply by the denominator. on both sides. Alright, so these will cancel. That leaves me a 4w equals. Alright, we'll type this one into the calculator, see what we get here. Alright, 343 times 0 0.02847. So 9.77 approximately. And we divide by 4. Divided by 4. 2.44, which is right there. All right, number 10, you need to break this down. So 9 times 3, 3 times 3. Okay, we can't take out anything because we need a group of 9. We only have 3. So just rewrite it. 9, 3 cubed. Well, we can convert that into a fraction, nine to the three or three to the three ninths, and three ninths reduces to three to the one third. Okay, looks like our answer choices are back in radical form, so let's convert it back into radical form. Cube root of three to the first power. So cube root of three. All right, g of h of two. So start on the inside, work your way out. So do h of 2 first. So that's 2. We're plugging in 2 for x in the h function. 2 times 2 squared plus 7 times 2 plus 3. All right, 2 squared is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 7 times 2 is 14. 8 plus 14 is 22 plus 3 is 25. All right, but we have to do g of that. So we're now going to do g of 25. 25 plus 3 is 28. All right, this will be the last one on this video, finishing up the multiple choice, f of g of x. All right, g is x plus 3. f is x squared. So we plug this in for x. So that's x plus 3 squared. Need to do foil or window pane. x plus 3, x plus 3. That's x squared, 3x, 3x, 3 times 3, 9. Add the ones in the middle, 3 plus 3, x squared plus 6x plus 9. All right, check out one of the other videos to get your free response questions.